Let's talk a little bit about the curve of binding energy. This is, by the way, the title of a book by a guy named John McPhee. Uh, and I believe he's written books about geology, and uh, he's also written a book called Coming Into the Country uh, that I highly recommend. Uh, but the curve of binding energy is exactly about what we're going to talk about here. This, first of all, we got to look at what we're looking at here. This is the mass number, right? This is A. And so we get up to big mass numbers, 238, uranium 238, 250 is the end there, right? And then this is the binding energy per nucleon. So that is the binding energy, as we know how to calculate it, divided by this, okay? What this means is, uh, is the, the, these guys right here, okay, those are the most tightly bound right there, okay? So um, the, right here at the peak, the most binding energy, these are the most stable things, okay? So iron cannot be, we can't split iron apart and get energy out of it. We can't join it up with anything. We can't go this way and get energy out of it. This is the end of the road as far as nuclear energy goes. Iron and nickel are right about there. These guys right here, we can go to more tightly bound. And when you go to tor more tightly bound, you release energy. So the uh, nuclear fission reactions uh, that we've used right in nuclear power plants so far have released about this much energy, right? And that's a fair amount of energy per nucleon, right? Uh, remember that there's lots of nucleons. There's 200 and some nucleons there, and we're releasing almost 10 MeV per nucleon. So that's on the order of 200 MeV per reaction. That's, that's pretty good, right? Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. These guys, we can take these guys and, and do fission, right? Fission is splitting, right? That's the splitting of nuclei. We can split them and make them more like this with our reactions, right? Okay. Things like this, though, hydrogen especially, right? Right now, our sun is actually going from hydrogen to helium. That's a huge change, yes? Okay. So that's fusion. So right after we, you know, invented fission bombs and, and you realized just how many people we could kill with fission bombs, right? Then we created hydrogen bombs. These are fusion bombs, right? Okay, so fusion takes hydrogen and turns it into helium. This releases a lot more energy. The nuclear output of, of, of fission bombs, right, um, uranium-type bombs, is measured in, in uh, kilotons, thousands of tons of TNT equivalent explosive. And these guys are, of course, measured in, in megatons, right? These are the... the you know, the, the mutually assured destruction or something like that of entire cities, right? So uh, that this is a very important thing. Stars are doing this right now. Right now, all these elements are made by stars. Stars are these big pressure cookers that are right now our sun is making hydrogen in, into helium. And a super giant star, one bigger than our sun, would eventually keep making things. Stars quit making, though, elements at iron in their normal everyday life. And then, of course, the question is, how, what made these, right? That was a great mystery for a while. We'll talk about that in astrophysics, but it, you, stars make them, but not normally. They do make them as they die. Something called a supernova, a gravitational collapse, can create these things, okay? Um, so that's the difference, right? Fission is creating fissures between things. Fusion, fusion is fusing them together, right? And it's easy to remember. Fissures. Okay, most tightly bound. So here, fission releases energy on these guys. Fusion releases energy for these guys. This is the holy grail. You know, all, all nuclear scientists um, either want to capture all the black helicopters or they want to uh, create a nuclear fusion reaction because there's so much more energy there. Hydrogen is way more abundant than uh, uranium-235. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of hydrogen in water, for example, right? Um, this is a typical reaction. This is one that's given in your textbook. Uh, notice that this thing um, is started by a neutron. It releases more neutrons than it, um, than it started with. And so this is, of course, can be made into a chain reaction, right? Th these neutrons can then start breaking up more of these and you, know, you can get the dude and then, you know, it's like, choo, choo, choo. and then these guys make three and then these guys make three. And it's like a crazy tournament, you know, you know eventually three-way or whatever, right? It's a crazy thing, right? And then typically that's about, you hear 200 million electron volts. That's big, that's a huge deal. 200 million electron volts 
uh, uh, chemical reactions are tens of just plain electron volts. Now we're not talking millions of electron volts, right? On the order of 10 electron volts are chemical reactions, right? Tens of electron volts. So this is a tremendous amount of energy, right? Uh, yeah. And then nuclear fusion, this is what's going on in the sun. It's a complicated thing that called the proton-proton cycle. And by the way, we know all what's going on in the suns and stars, and we understand um, fusion and fission reactions uh, intimately. In fact, we, we've got computer models. We don't need to, we don't, uh, the United States wants to unilaterally ban all testing of nuclear devices because we've got supercomputers that model them, right? All of this was based on uh, desire to uh, beat the Soviet Union in the Cold War. All of our nuclear research was funded. It was not uh, it was not any um, magnanimous thing on our part, right? It was just uh, trying to beat the Soviet. Uh, ooh, that's a bad looking thing there. It, we were just trying to beat the Soviet Union in the Cold War. So um, here's you can also it keeps going, right? Helium can make things like carbon, right? And then uh, I'm not going to doodle anymore. And then uh, carbon can fuse and make things, and it just keeps going. Remember, it's going to go until you get to uh, iron, iron or nickel, right? These guys are, are the, the um, these guys are the are the, are the slag heap, right? These are the most um, these are the most uh, tightly bound things, and so you can't get any more energy out of them. If you try to go higher, you got to actually put energy in to make things heavier, and if you try to crack them apart, you have to put energy in, right? Okay, so it looks like it's the, the highest energy, but it's actually the lowest energy. Okay, anyway, that's fission and fusion. If you look at this curve, you can predict where these guys are all going to fuse. These guys are going to, uh, these are going to have to fissure to release energy.